Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm going to I'm going to try and keep lightning in the back of my mind and not try and overpace myself or talk too fast. Um, I feel really grateful, David, to be in this conversation. I, I was in a room in Austin uh, overlooking the Mopac Expressway when the whole Path to Agility conversation started, and it was about five years ago. And uh, since then, I've, I've gone many miles, and I've, I've learned things, and I've also made mistakes, and just happy to be back sharing a few of the things that I'm curious about with the community. So um, I, I was struck by, I, I think, some of the same challenges we're all looking at these days, which is agility is not about a team level um, performance, or it's, it's about system optimization versus local optimization. So this was the question I, I was grappling with about three or four years ago. Um, what I'm going to talk to you right now is, is about is learning at the speed of work. And I got to think Inkling, which is an LMS uh, group based in, I think, Seattle, or no, they're, they're actually the Bay Area. Um, and th that phrase is, is actually stolen directly from their collateral. So uh, let's go bobsledding. It's the Olympics. Um, we are descending down into from a line down the slope. Uh, this is the area I'm going to focus on with Path to Agility. Um, and I said bobsledding because this area is fraught with peril. All we know, we all know it's chaos and disorientation is, is the, the phrase we use, frustration in this period. So why not make it fun, hop on a bobsled, and uh, have a run at it? Kind of, kind of hold your hands up and treat it as if it's a, uh, a bit of a, of a, of a ride. So um, the stage I'm focused on is learning, which I think really spans all the stages. But um, creating a culture of learning is one of the phrases we use in Path to Agility. So how do we do that? And what does that look like? So the guiding question for us here is, is how can we, as facilitators and practitioners, Enable organizational learning, create a culture of learning, and I have four bullet points that I'm after. How do we build agile capabilities faster? How do we spread the learning broadly with minimal intervention? How do we leverage intrinsic assets, people, insights, materials that are generated in terms of the organization? And how do we make it autocatalytic? I learned a new word last week. It's called autocatalytic. It means you, it, it kind of perpetuates itself. So, um, my attention is on capabilities. How do we build capabilities in teams, organizations, systems um, using learning platforms, tools, models, modalities? I love Meg Wheatley. She's retired or semi-retired now, but um, she says, if you wanna connect an organization or strengthen an organization, connect it to more of itself. I would also um, say we could use and think the same way about capabilities. If you wanna build capabilities faster, make them more resilient, make them stronger, find ways to get the workforce connected to itself. Um, and that's going to, I think, enable more of those capabilities to come online more quickly. So is, here's a question. Is your client's learning sequestered? So I'm currently at a client that builds um, heated seats for the automotive industry. I've been there about 10 months. Uh, my colleagues have been there almost two years. There's a lot of pockets of stuff happening, but there's no collective um, momentum around a transformation. So the, the learnings are kind of pocketed and sequestered. And uh, that's a question for, for you to think about. Is your learning sequestered or is it spreading? Now, I know wildfire is not necessarily a, a positive metaphor, but it's an interesting metaphor. Um, can, we, can we actually create learning experiences and can we actually um, catalyze something or introduce something that begins to build on itself in a healthy way. Forget about the whole death and destruction thing. We're, we're, not, we're not focused on that part of wildfires. Um, so here's a question for you. Get your fingers on your keyboards. How well do your clients propagate learning? So if learning's happening in a pilot or in a team or some area of the organization, how well is the organization at large propagating that learning? Maybe through communities of practice, maybe through some different tools or channels. So go ahead and enter a, a number on the scale of one to five um, into your chat window. And I can't see a chat window. So if somebody wants to just give us a little bit of a flavor, um, that could be interesting. What do you see in David? You wanna give us a little commentary? Yeah, three, one, two, two, three, two, three, two, and three, three, two, five, three, three. Okay, 
So 2.45. Okay, so here's Bella. Uh, she's 26 years old. She has a bachelor's in textiles and clothing. She's a very fast learner. She's very motivated. And she's been asked to be a product owner for her uh, Greenfield project. Um, what, what learning options are available to Bella? So she could go to a CSPO class. She could go uh, to maybe mentor or apprentice with someone. Um, there's probably a handful of things that are available to her. Um, but there probably are things that we could provide as Path to Agility educators, facilitators, practitioners that could enable her to kind of be um, bring herself along more as opposed to relying on a structured learning program <clears throat> like a two-day CSPO or, or something of that ilk. So I, I had a couple more personas, but I just don't have time to dive into them. But I think an interesting conversation is to consider, you know, three, four, five different actors in the P2A program and ask ourselves, how are these people learning? And how can they, how can we activate learning in the most kind of graceful, effortless way? And I think there's, there's, a, there's a learning stack, a modern learning stack that could support that. Um, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I think it's there waiting to be discovered. So what does modern learning look like? Um, I will give Mural the award for the coolest animated graphic because I just cut and pasted that from their website. And it's so distracting. It makes you, it makes you feel like I've got to have Mural because I want to play that Tetris-like tile game. It's just so cool. It captures your attention. Um, I think there's going to be an aspect of real-time interaction, Zoom or whatever, go, go to webinar, whatever else, what other tool is out there, whatever tool is going to be happening, hot and happening two or three years from now. There's visual collaboration like Miro or Mural. I think there's going to be an LMS. I put CoAssemble up there. They're an Australian company, and I like them because they have a modern, clean user interface that's really cool. Um, and I think there's an aspect of cohort learning that's going to be integral to accelerating the building out of capabilities. Nomadic is a company that seems to be doing a lot of really cool stuff in the area of cohort learning. Um, so and it, I would say, what does modern consulting look like? So this is very fresh capture of some Miro frames. So I met with a client last week for one hour. I pulled up the path to agility business outcomes. I said, which of these do you care about? And they said, we care about four of them. And they mar we marked those four in green. So suddenly we have a context for the engagement. Now this is a very small client. They're not gonna buy into the, the whole part of path to agility, but exposing them to the business outcomes, getting them aware of the idea is, was really important. Um, we had them define success. I had them think about risks, um, what would slow them down. And we left them with the training catalog. So I met with them again this week for, for one hour. And I said, look, here's some things available to you. Go, go figure out what you want. And then let's talk about a statement of work. So I spent a total of two hours with this client. And they're off and running, planning the engagement. I don't have to plan it. They're planning it. And when they come back, we map something out and price it. So I share this because this is pointing the way to what I think is going to be more of a modern learning um, way of learning. Uh, lastly, I will say, what does individual learning look like at each of these stages? Think about that. And that's my time.